Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Last summer I got me a uh, project that I wanted to start on. It's this big uh, teapot here. It's uh, almost hard to see on the camera with a tiny lid. It's made of some paper craft and some glue or something. I got it really cheap on this um, sales exhibition I was on. And I was thinking Alice in Wonderland, uh, the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. I hope to get as much as possible from the Tea Party in here. It's not that big of a spot uh, for 1 to 12, but I would at least have one or two tables in here. Maybe the cat, the Sustria cat, or what the name is, um, the mouse, or... Uh, something I'm not good with characters but uh, let's try if you have some ideas for what more to put into this tea party please 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 let me know uh, but first of all we are going to cut it open and take a look at the outside of the teapot and make that really nice and pretty and then we will work on the inside so see you on the table so here is the pot with the lid and it's are huge but first of all I'm going to take it as it is go outside and spray it with a uh, primer spray just all over the outside of the teapot here uh, maybe the lid on both sides uh, I might have to glue the lid down here but we will see um, but I'm going to prime it now Let's go back to voiceover, this way you won't be annoyed by all my crafting sounds. I am first drawing on where I want to open up this little teapot and then I am going to use my X-Acto knife to cut it open. Um, this took a while so I did that off camera because that was easier. Um, yeah, just taking my time and uh, enjoying the process. Then I am just popping out this piece here and I have a nice opening for my scenery. I have this granite spray in grey and I really like this one. So I went outside and sprayed it. I placed the door back with some um, masking tape so that I didn't uh, spray on the inside of the teapot. I am glazing the bottom part here with just some regular glaze. Uh, I'm hoping to make it waterproof as I am going to use my silky stall clay. This is a paper clay uh, to raise up the bottom part of this um, teapot and make it heavier in the bottom. So I'm just taking some of all of this air dried clay and I'm squeezing it down into the bottom part of the teapot. And I actually did let the uh, glaze dry before I did the step. I am flattening out the clay as good as I can with my hands and a tiny bit of water on my fingers um, and I let that dry and as you see it cracked a lot uh, so I'm using my tacky glue kind of just squeezing the glue into the uh, cracks here and then I'm taking a tiny bit more of my air dry clay and stuffing that over and into the glue uh, to kind of um, get rid of the cracks here that you see. So I'm just doing that one by one. I'm only putting a tiny thin layer on top here so that it won't crack again. I left this to dry overnight again before I continued on it. I took a pencil and I was going to uh, draw in some trees here at the background uh, but it's pretty hard to show you what I'm doing here um, inside of this little teapot because there is a weird space to work in and it's a weird space to record in. Using my hot glue gun I am kind of uh, drawing on the trees like I want them and some bushes and stuff like that. 
Uh, this is a trick I learned from Froggy Stuff. Uh, she is doing that sometimes here and there and the result is actually pretty awesome. Here you see the dried trees. I had these fairy lights lying around too. I thought why not place them into the little pot also to give me some little uh, more light to work with. So I am gluing uh, the battery compartment to the inside of the lid. It just fits there perfectly. So that was perfect. Then I'm just feeding the wire down into the pot. And I actually glued that around the opening on the uh, top of the pot and the opening that we cut out here. Um, and I glued it in with hot glue. This was really, really uh, difficult to um, record. So I skipped that, but I actually used hot glue to glue in the fairy lights. Now I am using a blue um, Vallejo paint and I am painting the sky part here. Again, mixing with a little white uh, to make some um, different colors in the sky. And I actually think this turned out really neat. Then I took my darkest green here and I am going to pop a lot of that into my little metal uh, tray here and I am going to color in all the trees and bushes that we made with the hot glue. Um, taking my time, making sure I get into all the small crevices there is in the glue so it looks really nice together. Then I am taking some lighter green and I am going to uh, dry brush that on top of what I just, just made. So I'm taking a tiny bit of the green on my uh, sponge here and then just uh, swapping it over the green that I had. I also used a uh, light lighter green and a yellow for this and here you see the results. The Mad Hatter's Tea Party is uh, going on outside um, with the, the trees and the flowers around it, grass and stuff like that. So I am using a piece of paper here to get the shape of the bottom of my teapot because I want some grass in there. So I have this grass paper that I am going to cut uh, so that it fits into the teapot here. Um, and I have this template now that I can use to cut the grass out uh, so that it fits perfect uh, in the teapot. I cut out the grass paper to the size of my template and then I am just using some of my tacky glue to glue it down into uh, the bottom of my teapot or onto the air dry clay and this is how that looks. I actually think that turned out really really neat. Now for the outside of this one I want to decorate this edge and maybe even the teapot itself. So I rolled out some of my air clay into a snake and I squeezed that onto the sides here all the way around in the opening. Um, but I decided to use some of my wood glue first all the way around to make sure that it will stick uh, to the sides here all the way around in the opening even when it is all dried up. And then I'm just placing the ribbon all the way around the opening and I'm smoothing and softening it out so that the connection uh, between the two uh, end points, the start and the end point, is kind of uh, disappearing um, into the smoothing look here. It's not that smooth and soft, but I did my very best with this. I wanted to make a heart key, so again I rolled out some of my air dry clay here, again the paper clay, and I shaped the top here as a heart and smoothened out the connection here where the two parts are connected. Then I just made a simple key um, thing here 
to place on the end of the key so that it really looks like a key. I just flatten out my cane and I'm just um, placing that on the key, softening that uh, connection out and then I am cutting out a few T's in the key. It does not need to be something fancy, it just needs to be looking okay. Because uh, I am going to paint this gold anyway and decorate it a tiny bit, so nothing fancy here. I waited for the clay to dry and harden totally and then I am going to mix some white with a tiny bit of black color in there uh, to make this light gray uh, color. And I am going to use that on this white ribbon all the way around the uh, opening in my teapot because that is really visible. So I wanted a gray that kind of hides with the um, with this uh, stone texture that this has on the outside. I actually like this gray one so I just painted the rim all the way around and the inside part of it as well. While that was drying, I took my gold paint here and I am just going to paint my little key all gold. When that key was dry, I had some nice blue colored ribbon here and I am deciding where to hang the key. I think I want it here by the sprout. So I am going to take um, the ribbon here and wrap that around the neck. But first I took this bigger jump ring here in a nice golden color and placed that around the key. And then another golden uh, jump ring uh, through that first jump ring. And then I placed the ribbon through the second jump ring. Now I am going to tie the ribbon around it. I want enough to make a uh, cute little bow. Moving the jump ring so that I have it inside the knot for the bow here. And then I'm just gonna tie the little cute bow on top here. I actually glued everything in place with a tiny bit of um, super glue gel. I'm not showing that here, but I did so that it won't run anywhere. Using a lighter, I am just giving this a tiny, tiny bit of a burn so that it won't uh, fray when it has been hanging there for a few days or years, maybe. The key actually broke for me here on the middle part, so it has this uh, glued together look right there. So I decided to place a little bow of the ribbon right there as well to hide this little a uh, place where the key has been broken and I actually think that looks really really neat. I did not show that here in the video but I took a head pin and placed a lot of cool uh, beads on there in the rows that I like them and then I made a little loop here at the top so that I can hang that in one of these golden rings. So I'm just opening this golden ring enough to place the little loop and to place this golden ring in the golden ring that is hanging in the ribbon here. And then I'm just closing that up again. And that is all there is for the start of the Alice in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter's party. Next time I hope to be able to make one of the tables that is going into this little scenery here. I had a lot of fun with this, um, so I'm looking forward to the next part. Thank you so much for watching this first part of the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Um, I am going to have a lot of fun with this one. I hope you will enjoy that as well. So I will see you in the next video in a week from now. Happy crafting! Thank you so much that you watched it. Bleh.